Welcome to our lecture online. Here's another example of how we're going to use source transformation to solve for the circuit. In this case, we're trying to find the current in the rightmost branch. Notice I already drew the circuit I'm trying to get from moving from here to here by taking the current source with the impedance in parallel and transform into a voltage source with the impedance in series. Notice it does simplify the circuit quite a bit just with that one step. Also notice I put down method one because I'm going to solve this problem in slightly two different ways to show you that there's many ways in which you can approach a problem like this. There's not just a single approach to using source transformation. And so you can see that hmm, there's different things you can do at any point in time to solve the circuit. But first let's do it like this. So we're going to convert from here to here. Again, notice that to find the voltage, we know that uh, I is equal to V over R or V over Z. So from here we can then conclude that the voltage must therefore be the product of I times Z. Now we have the current right here, so that would be equal to 12 with a phase angle of a positive 90 degrees. And we have to multiply it times the impedance. The impedance is 4 minus J3. So what does that convert to? Well, you could say that 4 minus J3 uh, can be written as the product is going to be uh, 16 plus 9, 25, that would be 5 with a phase angle of negative. That's a 3, 4, 5 angle. Mm, let's see here. 3 quarters, 3 divided by 4. Take the, oh, 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 3 divided by 4. Take the phase angle. That's a 36.87 degrees. 36.87. Let me try this again. 3 divided by 4. Take the inverse tangent. 36.87 degrees. So that would be 5 with a phase angle of minus 36.87 degrees. Like this. And notice that gives us a voltage that's equal to 60 with a phase angle of, make that minus plus 90, that's 53.13 degrees. So 53.13 degrees. And that becomes a new voltage source, 60 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees. And the impedance, of course, is going to be the same, so we end up with a 4 minus J3. All right, where do we go next? Well, what we could do is we could combine these two and then do a source transformation again. We're going to use that for method 2. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here, I'm going to combine these and I'm going to combine D. So I'm going to call that Z parallel. Z parallel for these two branches. So let's figure out what that's equal to. So Z parallel is equal to the product over the sum. And so the product that would be J5 multiplied times a 1 minus J2 divided by the sum. That would be 1. This plus this, that gives me plus J3. When I multiply, I get uh, j times j is a negative 1 times negative is positive 1, so that gives me a 10, and uh, plus j5, in the numerator, divided by 1 plus j3 in the denominator. Now I can go ahead and convert that to magnitude and phase angle format. So that's 125, take the square root of that, 11.18. 11.18 with a phase angle of uh, 0.5. Take the tangent, 26565. This and divide that by. Here we have 10. Take the square root. That's 3.16. 3.16 with a phase angle of 3. Take the tangent, 71.565. 71.565 degrees. And let's see here, that's 11.18 divided by 3.16. That gives us 3.54. 3.54 with a phase angle of 26. Huh, these cancel out, so 26 minus 71 gives me minus 45. All right. So, um, let's see here. Since I'm going to combine that now with the impedance over here, I'm going to retransform that into the real and imaginary parts. So Z parallel will then convert to 
45 degrees, take the cosine, times 3.54, that's 2.5. So that's a 2.5 minus j, and that would be 2.5 again. All right, so there's the impedance of that parallel portion right here. So that's this portion right here. And I'm going to add that to this. So now I can find the total impedance. So Z total equals four. Well, let me see, let me write that down. So this here is equal to 2.5 minus J 2.5. So let's add all the real parts together. Four plus two plus 2.5, that's 8.5 for the real part. And the imaginary part, minus three, that becomes minus two. And a minus 2.5, that's minus 4.5. So minus J 4.5. So now I want to convert that to magnitude and phase angle format. So 8.5 squared plus 4.5 squared equals, take the square root, 9.62. So that'd be 9.62 with a phase angle of 4.5 divided by 8.5 inverse tangent minus 27.90 minus 27.90 degrees. So now that I have my total impedance of the circuit and I have my voltage, hmm, let's see, what could I do next? What would be the next step? Do I use a voltage divider? Do I use a current divider? Hmm. I tell you what, so here I'm kind of thinking about what I should do. Now I don't have the next circuit drawn, so notice that this whole thing will be a single impedance at the end equal to this. So that represents the voltage drop from there to there. So if I have a point right here, note right there, and a note right there, this is the impedance of the, the what's in between these two notes. So what I could do is I could say, well, I could do a voltage divider. So what I can do is I can take this here and call this V output, so to speak, if you want to think about it that way. All right, so if I want to do that, I can say the V output is equal to V of the source, V of the source, multiplied times the voltage divider, which would be the voltage, I mean the impedance of this, divided by the total impedance. So it would be uh, the impedance of 2.5 minus J25 in this format right here. So it would be 3.54 with a phase angle of uh, minus 45 degrees. I was a little bit early with my parentheses here, like this, and divide that by the total impedance, which is what I have here, 9.62 divided by a minus 27.90. And notice that the source voltage is 60. So I'll go ahead like this and multiply times 60 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees. Again, this illustrates that there's many different ways in which you can approach it. I could have used a current divider, I could have used a voltage divider, which I end up doing. So again, it doesn't matter. All roads lead to the same answer, provided we don't make a little mistake somewhere. All right, output voltage is 60 times 3.54 divided by 9.62 that gives us 22.08 so 22.08 with a phase angle of k 53.13 minus 45 plus 27.9 equals and with a phase angle of 36.03 Okay, that gives us the output voltage. Now we need the current. And remember that the current is voltage divided by impedance. So I equals the output voltage divided by the impedance of, of course, this final branch right here. And the impedance of that branch would be one minus J2. It would be one minus J2, and the output voltage is 22.08 with a phase angle of 36.03. So this is 22.08 with a phase angle of 
36.03 degrees, all divided by this. So we have uh, 5, 4 plus 1 is 5, take the square root of that, which is 2.236. With a phase angle of minus 2, take the inverse tangent, that's 63.435. And of course, that would be a negative. And finally, we can say that the current is equal to 22.08 divided by 2.236. That gives us a current of 9.87 with a phase angle of somewhere close to 100 degrees, 36.03, oh, 30, hmm, 36.03 plus 63.435, that gives us 99.46 degrees. All right, so that's how we did that. Again, the first step was the big step, in order to source transformation us from this circuit to this circuit. I don't know if that's the proper word or not, but anyway, what we did was we went from a current, uh, current source with a impedance in parallel to the voltage source with the same impedance in series. Now that all we have to do is solve for this impedance, go from parallel to a series connection right here. Then we add up all the impedances together. Once we have the parallel impedance, we add them all together to get the total impedance of the circuit. Then we find the output voltage by simply saying, now I have a voltage divider, the voltage across here can be found by taking the total voltage and then taking multiply times the ratio of this impedance divided by the total impedance, essentially a voltage divider circuit, that gives us the output voltage across the branch points right here, which is the same as the voltage across here. Once we have that voltage to find the current voltage divided by impedance, that gives us the current to that final branch. One way to do it, on the next video, we'll show you a different way. What we'll do there is we'll do source transformation twice to get a circuit that's, can be, uh, that can be simplified in a different way, but again, hopefully getting the very same answer when we try it again. But that is how it's done using source transformation. Any mistakes? <laughs> uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look here. 9.86, close enough. Close enough. Yes, how about that? Correct. Congratulations.